Human evolution is the evolutionary process that led to the emergence of anatomically modern humans. The topic typically focuses on the evolutionary history of the primates, in particular the genus Homo, and the emergence of Homo sapiens as a distinct species of the hominids, rather than studying the earlier history that led to the primates. The study of human evolution involves many scientific disciplines, including physical anthropology, primatology, archaeology, paleontology, ethology, linguistics, evolutionary psychology, embryology and genetics. Genetic studies show that primates diverged from other mammals about 85 million years ago, in the late Cretaceous period and the earliest fossils appear in the Paleocene, around 55 million years ago. Within the Hominoidea superfamily, the Hominidae family diverged from the Hylobatidae family some 15 to 20 million years ago. African great apes diverged from orangutans about 14 million years ago. The Hominini tribe parted from the Gorillini tribe about 8 million years ago, and... In turn, the sub-tribes Hominina and Panina separated about 7.5 million years ago. The basic adaptation of the hominin line is bipedalism. The earliest bipedal hominin is considered to be either Sahelanthropus or Aurorin. Alternatively, either Sahelanthropus or Aurorin may instead be the last shared ancestor between chimps and humans. The earliest documented representative of the genus Homo is Homo habilis, which evolved around 2.8 million years ago, and is arguably the earliest species for which there is positive evidence of the use of stone tools. The brains of these early hominins were about the same size as that of a chimpanzee, although it has been suggested that this was the time in which the human SRGAP2 gene doubled, producing a more rapid wiring of the frontal cortex. During the next million years a process of rapid encephalization occurred, and with the arrival of Homo erectus and Homo ergaster in the fossil record, cranial capacity had doubled to 850 cc. It is believed that Homo erectus and Homo ergaster were the first to use fire and complex tools and were the first of the hominin line to leave Africa, spreading throughout Africa, Asia, and Europe between 1.3 to 1.8 million years ago. According to the recent African origin of modern humans theory, modern humans evolved in Africa possibly from Homo heidelbergensis, Homo rhodesiensis or Homo antecessor and migrated out of the continent some 50,000 to 100,000 years ago gradually replacing local populations of Homo erectus, Denisova hominins, Homo floresiensis and Homo neanderthalensis, archaic Homo sapiens, the forerunner of anatomically modern humans, evolved in the Middle Paleolithic between 400,000 and 250,000 years ago. Recent DNA evidence suggests that several haplotypes of Neanderthal origin are present among all non-African populations, and Neanderthals and other hominins, such as Denisovans, may have contributed up to 6% of their genome to present-day humans suggestive of a limited interbreeding between these species. The transition to behavioral modernity with the development of symbolic culture, language, and specialized lithic technology happened around 50,000 years ago according to many anthropologists although some suggest a gradual change in behavior over a longer time span. History of study before Darwin the word homo, the name of the biological genus to which humans belong, is Latin for human. It was chosen originally by Carolus Linnaeus in his classification system. The word human is from the Latin humanus, the adjectival form of homo. The Latin homo derives from the Indo-European root asterisk dhg hemp or earth. Linnaeus and other scientists of his time also considered the great apes to be the closest relatives of humans based on morphological and anatomical similarities. Darwin The possibility of linking humans with earlier apes by descent became clear only after 1859 with the publication of Charles Darwin's On the Origin of Species in which he argued for the idea of the evolution of new species from earlier ones. 
Darwin's book did not address the question of human evolution, saying only that light will be thrown on the origin of man and his history. The first debates about the nature of human evolution arose between Thomas Henry Huxley and Richard Owen. Huxley argued for human evolution from apes by illustrating many of the similarities and differences between humans and apes and did so particularly in his 1863 book Evidence as to Man's Place in Nature. However, many of Darwin's early supporters did not initially agree that the origin of the mental capacities and the moral sensibilities of humans could be explained by natural selection, though this later changed. Darwin applied the theory of evolution and sexual selection to humans when he published The Descent of Man in 1871. First fossils A major problem at that time was the lack of fossil intermediaries. Neanderthal remains were discovered in a limestone quarry in 1856, three years before the publication of On the Origin of Species, and Neanderthal fossils had been discovered in Gibraltar even earlier but it was originally claimed that these were human remains of a creature suffering some kind of illness. Despite the 1891 discovery by Eugene Dubois of what is now called Homo erectus at Trinil, Java, it was only in the 1920s when such fossils were discovered in Africa that intermediate species began to accumulate. In 1925, Raymond Dart described Australopithecus africanus. The type specimen was the Tarung child, an Australopithecine infant which was discovered in a cave. The child's remains were a remarkably well-preserved tiny skull and an endocranial cast of the brain. Although the brain was small, its shape was rounded, unlike that of chimpanzees and gorillas, and more like a modern human brain. Also, the specimen showed short canine teeth, and the position of the foramen magnum was evidence of bipedal locomotion. All of these traits convinced Dart that the Tarung child was a bipedal human ancestor, a transitional form between apes and humans. The East African fossils, and Homo nalidae in South Africa during the 1960s and 1970s. Hundreds of fossils were found in East Africa in the regions of the Old Uve Gorge and Lake Turkana. The driving force of these searches was the Leakey family, with Louis Leakey and his wife Mary Leakey, and later their son Richard and daughter-in-law Meve, all successful and world-renowned fossil hunters and paleoanthropologists. From the fossil beds of Old Uve and Lake Turkana they amassed specimens of the early hominins the Australopithecines and Homo species, and even Homo erectus. These finds cemented Africa as the cradle of humankind. In the late 1970s and the 1980s, Ethiopia emerged as the new hotspot of paleoanthropology after Lucy, the most complete fossil member of the species Australopithecus afarensis was found in 1974 by Donald Johansson near Hadar in the desertic Afar Triangle region of northern Ethiopia. Although the specimen had a small brain, the pelvis and leg bones were almost identical in function to those of modern humans, showing with certainty that these hominins had walked erect. Lucy was classified as a new species, Australopithecus afarensis, which is thought to be more closely related to the genus Homo as a direct ancestor, or as a close relative of an unknown ancestor, than any other known hominid or hominin from this early time range, see terms, hominid, and hominin. The Afar Triangle area would later yield discovery of many more hominin fossils particularly those are uncovered or described by teams headed by Tim D. White in the 1990s, including Ardipithecus ramidus and Ardipithecus cadaba. In 2013, fossil skeletons of Homo nalidae, an extinct species of hominin assigned to the genus Homo, were found in the Rising Star Cave system, a site in South Africa's Cradle of Humankind region in Gauteng province near Johannesburg. 
As of September 2015, update, fossils of at least 15 individuals, amounting to 1550 specimens, have been excavated from the cave. The species is characterized by a body mass and stature similar to small-bodied human populations. A smaller endocranial volume similar to Australopithecus, and a cranial morphology similar to early Homo species. The skeletal anatomy combines primitive features known from Australopithecines with features known from early hominins. The individuals show signs of having been deliberately disposed of within the cave near the time of death. The fossils have not yet been dated. The genetic revolution The genetic revolution in studies of human evolution started when Vincent Serich and Alan Wilson measured the strength of immunological cross-reactions of blood serum albumin between pairs of creatures, including humans and African apes. The strength of the reaction could be expressed numerically as an immunological distance which was in turn proportional to the number of amino acid differences between homologous proteins in different species. By constructing a calibration curve of the ID of species pairs with known divergence times in the fossil record, the data could be used as a molecular clock to estimate the times of divergence of pairs with poorer or unknown fossil records. In their seminal 1967 paper in Science, Sarich and Wilson estimated the divergence time of humans and apes as 4 to 5 million years ago, at a time when standard interpretations of the fossil record gave this divergence as at least 10 to as much as 30 million years. Subsequent fossil discoveries, notably Lucy, and reinterpretation of older fossil materials, notably Ramapithecus, show the younger estimates to be correct and validated the albumin method. Progress in DNA sequencing, specifically mitochondrial DNA and then Y-chromosome DNA advanced the understanding of human origins. Application of the molecular clock principle revolutionized the study of molecular evolution. On the basis of a separation from the orangutan between 10 and 20 million years ago, earlier studies of the molecular clock suggested that there were about 76 mutations per generation that were not inherited by human children from their parents. This evidence supported the divergence time between hominins and chimps noted above. However, a 2012 study in Iceland of 78 children and their parents suggests a mutation rate of only 36 mutations per generation. This datum extends the separation between humans and chimps to an earlier period greater than 7 million years ago. Additional research with 226 offspring of wild chimp populations in eight locations suggests that chimps reproduce at age 26.5 years on average, which suggests the human divergence from chimps occurred between 7 to 13 million years ago, and these data suggest that Ardipithecus, Aurorin and Sahelanthropus all may be on the hominin lineage, and even that the separation may have occurred outside the East African Rift region. Furthermore, analysis of the two species' genes in 2006 provides evidence that after human ancestors had started to diverge from chimpanzees, interspecies mating between proto-human and proto-chimps nonetheless occurred regularly enough to change certain genes in the new gene pool. A new comparison of the human and chimp genomes suggests that after the two lineages separated, they may have begun interbreeding. A principal finding is that the X chromosomes of humans and chimps appear to have diverged about 1.2 million years more recently than the other chromosomes. The research suggests there were in fact two splits between the human and chimp lineages, with the first being followed by interbreeding between the two populations and then a second split. The suggestion of a hybridization has startled paleoanthropologists, who nonetheless are treating the new genetic data seriously. The quest for the earliest hominin in the 1990s Several teams of paleoanthropologists were working throughout Africa looking for evidence of the earliest divergence of the hominin lineage from the great apes. In 1994, Meves Leakey discovered Australopithecus animensis. 
The find was overshadowed by Tim D. White's 1995 discovery of Ardipithecus ramidus, which pushed back the fossil record to 4.2 million years ago. In 2000, Martin Pickford and Bridget Sanut discovered, in the Tugan Hills of Kenya, a 6 million year old bipedal hominin which they named Aurora in Tugenensis. And in 2001, a team led by Mitchell Brunet discovered the skull of Sahelanthropus chadensis which was dated as 7.2 million years ago, and which Brunet argued was a bipedal, and therefore a hominid, that is, a hominin. Subsequently, genetics has been used to investigate and resolve these issues. According to the Sahara pump theory evidence suggests that genus Homo have migrated out of Africa at least three times. The out of Africa model proposed that modern H. Sapiens speciated in Africa recently, and the subsequent migration through Eurasia resulted in nearly complete replacement of other Homo species. This model has been developed by Chris B. Stringer and Peter Andrews. In contrast, the multi-regional hypothesis proposed that Homo genus contained only a single interconnected population as it does today, and that its evolution took place worldwide continuously over the last couple million years. This model was proposed in 1988 by Milford H. Wolpoff. Sequencing mtDNA and yDNA sampled from a wide range of indigenous populations revealed ancestral information relating to both male and female genetic heritage. Aligned in genetic tree differences were interpreted as supportive of a recent single origin. Analyses have shown a greater diversity of DNA patterns throughout Africa consistent with the idea that Africa is the ancestral home of mitochondrial Eve and Y-chromosomal Adam, out of Africa, has gained support from research using female mitochondrial DNA in the male Y-chromosome. After analyzing genealogy trees constructed using 133 types of mtDNA, researchers concluded that all were descended from a female African progenitor dubbed mitochondrial Eve, out of Africa, is also supported by the fact that mitochondrial genetic diversity is highest among African populations. A broad study of African genetic diversity, headed by Sarah Tishkoff, found the San people had the greatest genetic diversity among the 113 distinct populations sampled, making them one of 14 ancestral population clusters. The research also located the origin of modern human migration in southwestern Africa, near the coastal border of Namibia and Angola. The fossil evidence was insufficient for Richard Leakey to resolve this debate. Studies of haplogroups in Y-chromosomal DNA and mitochondrial DNA have largely supported a recent African origin. Evidence from autosomal DNA also predominantly supports a recent African origin. However, evidence for archaic admixture in modern humans had been suggested by some studies. Recent sequencing of Neanderthal and Denisovan genomes shows that some admixture occurred. Modern humans outside Africa have 2-4% Neanderthal alleles in their genome, and some Melanesians have an additional 4-6% of Denisovan alleles. These new results do not contradict the out-of-Africa model, except in its strictest interpretation. After recovery from a genetic bottleneck that might be due to the Toba supervolcano catastrophe, a fairly small group left Africa and briefly interbred with Neanderthals, probably in the Middle East or even North Africa before their departure. They're still predominantly African descendants spread to populate the world. A fraction in turn interbred with Denisovans, probably in Southeast Asia, before populating Melanesia. HLA haplotypes of Neanderthal and Denisov origin have been identified in modern Eurasian and Oceanian populations. There are still differing theories on whether there was a single exodus from Africa or several. A multiple dispersal model involves the Southern Dispersal Theory, which has gained support in recent years from genetic, linguistic and archaeological evidence.
In this theory, there was a coastal dispersal of modern humans from the Horn of Africa around 70,000 years ago. This group helped to populate Southeast Asia and Oceania, explaining the discovery of early human sites in these areas much earlier than those in the Levant. A second wave of humans may have dispersed across the Sinai Peninsula into Asia, resulting in the bulk of human population for Eurasia. This second group possibly possessed a more sophisticated tool technology and was less dependent on coastal food sources than the original group. Much of the evidence for the first group's expansion would have been destroyed by the rising sea levels at the end of each glacial maximum. The multiple dispersal model is contradicted by studies indicating that the populations of Eurasia and the populations of Southeast Asia and Oceania are all descended from the same mitochondrial DNA lineages which support a single migration out of Africa that gave rise to all non-African populations.